Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my program I made using um, the graphics class to make a flag. First, I'm going to show the flag, just show what it looks like, and then I'm going to explain how I did most of it. So wow, I, that's pretty awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I did very, the, very nice. I did the UK flag, and because I felt like it would be like more of a challenge to do this one than just like simple shapes. You know, well, you lucked out because uh, if Scotland had seceded, <laughs> they would have had to change the flag. So it is true. You I lucked out by, <laughs> by a few votes. You you were able to maintain the integrity of your side. Well, thank you, Scotland. All right. <laughs> now, first, I'm going to um, show how I actually made it, and then I'm going to show the J-frame next. Okay. So this is the code to like actually make the flag what it is. And first, I had to extend it to create some letters I wanted to work with the J-frame. And then right here, I used final static class. This was for the brush stroke. Like I, if you notice right here, these weren't actually rectangles, they were just lines that I made thicker so it would appear like that. Because I couldn't make rectangles go diagonal. And then right here, I created um, a new color. Because the blue they had was too light and I wanted more of a darker blue. So I had to use these. I would do these both right here. And then, basically right here, I would set the color. And then, just draw the rectangle how it is. And I covered up the whole J frame. It was 600 by 400, I believe. Yeah. So I covered all of it with just a blue rectangle as a background. And then I had to move on to the white stuff. So it's all the um, white hey, behind the red. If you want to just, um, because of the location of the microphone mark, yeah. instead of using the uh, blue marker, just go ahead and, and highlight the code down oh, on your mark. Yeah. And you erase the... Uh, yeah. Do it like that. Yeah. Go ahead. Any so... We were we were at the part where you said you yeah. were, were doing the white um, uh, the white lines yeah like right, right behind the red mostly because I I figured out later on that when I use each one of these graphics things it goes layer by layer so I just start it's all the way in the back and then work my way to the top okay. I wanted like because I couldn't just like put the white behind the red I had to like code it first because I guess they went in order of how the code went. So show me with the Union Jack, show me what you mean by the different layers. What are you talking about? Well, first I started with a blue background, which is just a blue square. So, it Wait, with so the entire, the the entire, entire canvas was blue? Yeah, the entire canvas was blue. And then I had to move on to the white because it's behind the red. So I had to do all the white code over here, white, white, and then like, yeah, this is just the two lines of code I used. Okay, so in, fr in front of the blue but behind the red was the white? Yeah. Okay. And then I had to move on to the red stuff. Yeah. Oh, I also, this isn't all the white, because if you notice right here, the white, and then there's another white on top of the white, but it's also on top of the red. Uh -huh. So I had to do more of the diagonal stuff first, <laughs> and then more of like the horizontal and vertical stuff. Now, how did you figure out that order? Was it just trial and error? Trial and error. Oh, okay. I put a white on, and it was like over the red. I was like, uh -huh. why is it doing that? Okay. So then I moved on to the red diagonal stuff. And for the red one, it took me a while to figure out how to do them diagonal because at first I started with these they were easy it was just two rectangles one going up one going sideways right and then I needed them to go diagonal I couldn't figure out how to make a diagonal rectangle so I just made a line and I figured out if I make it thick enough it'll appear to be a rectangle right so that's what I did here yeah vertical white box and these are just the horizontal and vertical aspects of the program yeah. and then like here's, I used another class to actually call upon all this stuff. This is the one where the J-frame, I used it. So I'd include all the stuff for J-frame. And it extends to this class so that it actually like calls upon it, it recognizes what it wants it to do, and then it actually does its function. Where is it? There it is. So then like any J-frame needs to do, J-frame needs this new J-frame. Then it's set the size 600 by 404. I don't know why 404. It was just like, I guess the way the pixels work. Size not found. Yeah, I don't know. It just like, like trial and error. I did 400 and would like cut off some of it, so I did 404 to fit it. And then right here, I put the title UK flag so it appears up. <coughs> and then this is what I use because I figured out if I run it without that code, and I it would just like pop up right here, and I wanted like to pop up in like the middle of the screen. Okay, so let me see the code again. You're using the set location relative to method of J frame. Yes. Okay. I found it online somewhere. 
Oh, okay. Okay, and, and uh, what is that argument no there? What, what does it normally take? Well, I'm not sure what it normally takes. I know no means like nothing, right. but I never tried putting other coordinates. Right. Like maybe that would do something, but if I put no, I just knew it would always like pop up in the middle of the screen. Okay. So I kept it like that. And then I only think you need this code to exactly because like I kept commented it out and it would just work just fine, but like I would just keep it just in case. Right. On the book we used, it had it in there, so I felt like I need it in there. And this is actually when I called upon the rectangle stuff. Like it inherits from the rectangle class the twenty equals new, and it calls upon it, and it adds what is basically behind the scenes, and then it like puts it on top of the J frame for it to work. Okay, so go back to uh, that code right there, right? Explain to me what relationship exists between J frame rectangle component and the actual um, drawing of the uh, of the Union Jack. Like how they all relate to each other? Yeah, how are they related? Well, I know that the J frame, like first, if I had none of this code right here, if I didn't even put this, it would just be like an empty 600 by 404 canvas. Right. And then right here, this part of the code is where it calls upon all the stuff from this class that I made, and then it, like does all the work, it draws all the lines, and then it like adds it to the frame. Right. So it's like taking like the picture that I drew, kind of, and then just like pasting it on top of the J frame. Right. right. Which is which is. Um, Part of that GUI component that mm -hmm. you bring in with Java and stuff swing and so forth. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And then here, of course, it's added second so it's visible so I can see it. Right. You see how complicated it is, guys, to do graphics in Java? Yeah. Like something as apparent, you know, when you use your, you show that you Union Jack again. Something as simple as this, you know, something that you could do in 20 seconds using Paint or Photoshop takes forever to do from scratch, right? You know, why is it that Paint and Photoshop allows you to do this so easily? It's because of the um, the coding that's involved in, in, the, in the development of the application originally, right? Okay, what you guys, what you guys did, um, Mark, was yeah. really create a, um, a graphic object in, in, a, in a GUI component uh, inside job so yeah. Sorry. kudos very good this is uh, that's a very very good um, uh, and, and creative way of using the, those classes that you talked about Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments guys questions comments uh, anybody want to know how he did anything in this course I do have a question yeah is this the same is this similar to what they do when you go to a particular website and something pops up they do you want to click well, is that, that the same, is it, it's the same format, right? Yeah. So, so at, at the at the beginning, uh, Mr. Soto, most of those pop-ups were controlled with a, a, a scripting language called JavaScript. But then those pop-up ad blockers became fairly popular. Yeah, fairly popular. They they started to uh, interfere with the way uh, these companies delivered ads. So now they're becoming a little more. Um, inventive when it comes to delivering um, these ads. They, they don't just use JavaScript anymore. They use a ton of other technologies. Uh, Java could probably be one of them, uh, but I'm thinking that HTML5 is probably something that they're that they're going to be using uh, from this point forward. Um, people people want to deliver content like this. They, they, they'll offer you a lot of free things on, online, but in um, in exchange for you looking at advertising. So, okay. If I can say one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. It's like one thing like I didn't really like while doing this was I had to like keep creating new rectangles instead of just like having like a one rectangle thing and then like just drawing many of them. Right. I had to do like rectangle like and then I gave it a name like blue box example for the background. I had to give it like rectangle equals new rectangle. And just build that variable, and then you can do one for top line, and then one for this line, and one for that rectangle. I felt like it was very tedious. I'm like maybe there's another way for me to do it. But like at this time, I just felt like that's what I had to do. Is there anyone that can offer uh, any suggestions on how to do it differently? 
anytime you're anytime you're doing these different layers, Mark, you're gonna have to create objects that yeah. you know will will kind of cover that, you know, what you want to do in that layer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah what we did is uh, I never actually <coughs> One uh, one thing that we're going to be doing uh, a little later on in the class is we're going to be talking about uh, efficiency, the efficiency of your code, and we're going to be doing something called big O analysis. You're going to actually be determining mathematically whether or not you know Daniel's uh, algorithm for drawing these different rectangles, how more uh, how efficient it is relative to uh, Mark's drawing. Of so yeah, there, there's a big old value for all of these um, algorithms that you're going to be using in class. Um, we're going to be analyzing it in terms of um, how you sort things in an array. Um, is it faster if you sort them one by one, you look at each element of the array, or do you take half of the array and just sort those, take the other half, sort that, and then put both of those two uh, mini uh, sorted subarrays together into one big array and then start sorting it like that as well. We're, we're going to be looking at different uh, sorting algorithms and we're, and we're going to be looking at it from the point of view of how efficient it is uh, to sort. Yeah, that's going to become important when, <coughs> when you have something like 10 million records that you want to sort. Um, certain algorithms are a lot faster than others. One sorting algorithm that for us did um, actually took like four days to sort a million records. Um, and that same million records, Skyler was able to sort in like 40 minutes. So 40 minutes or four days, you know? You take your pick, right? So that's, that's gonna lend itself nicely to that conversation. Okay, very good. Okay, hey, Alt P. Alt P.